Hey there, it's Kurt of Trades here and I have another tutorial for you. I'm going to do an intro to Alpha OBD and how to get that set up. And I'm also going to show you how to activate your trailer lights for your Jeep Grand Cherokee. Uh, WK2 is the uh, model designation. So to uh, get Alpha OBD set up, you're only going to need two things. You're going to need an OBD scanner. Um, on Alpha OBD's website, he lists the ones that he knows for sure will work with his program. Uh, I believe the ones he recommends are the um, OBD Link series. So the OBD Link, this is the LX. There's also a wired one, which is the MX, I believe, and the MX Plus work. And then the last one that he recommends is the OBD Link uh, SX. So any of the, those OBD Link scanners will work. Um, I've heard rumors of other ones working as long as they're ELM 327 um, compatible ones. Um, and there's a lot of different ones out there on eBay and on Amazon, um, but they're not guaranteed to work. Um, I've heard most of them do work as long as they're ELM 327 compatible, and I think it's version 1.3 um, or, or greater. The other thing you're going to need is the Alpha OBD program. You can download it for free um, from Alpha OBD. Uh, dot com, which is their website. Um, the you have to get the actual version, so I'll have to get pay fifty dollars um, to get a code to unlock the real version. Uh, it's just a trial version if you download it and don't activate it. Um, so you're gonna have to pay fifty dollars for that, and then this one I think was about fifty dollars as well. It's about a hundred dollars total, and um, I recommend just getting the stuff to do it yourself because if you have the dealer program, the trailer lights to work. Uh, it, it can cost anywhere from $70 to $150 to get the dealer to do it. And if you buy these two things for $100, you can diagnose a whole bunch of other um, things with your Jeep or any Ram product or FCA vehicle. And it goes into way more depth than just a normal OBD2 reader. This goes into all the different modules, the transmission module, the ABS module, the body computer. Um, and, and there's thousands of different settings inside the program um, that you can play around with and see. Um, what's going on with your vehicle. So I really recommend getting the whole setup if you're going to do this. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to plug in your OBD2 scanner and the port is right underneath in this gap here. Uh, you'll see there's a little light and then a hole opening in the carpet for this to plug in. It's going to plug that in. should see the lights come on. And to get it to link up with your computer, um, you're going to have to hold down this little button here. Once you push that, it should start blinking rapidly. That's when you can uh, connect it to your computer. Then you're going to go into your settings in your computer under Bluetooth and um, just click add a new device. And then it should link right up with your Windows or um, Android tablet. Either of those will work with OBD Link and the Alpha OBD program. One quick note, um, don't leave these plugged in because I've heard they can drain your batteries as well. So uh, when you're done with it, unplug it. Once you have your um, OBD scanner connected to your computer, the only other thing you have to do to get it to um, start the program is you need to put your car in run mode. And to do that, it's very simple with the push button, key inside the car. Um, do not touch the brake because if you put your foot on the brake, your car will start. You're just going to hit it once, it will go into accessory mode, hit it again, and it will go into run mode. Make sure you turn um, off your fan blower and your radio. Um, because if those are on, it will drain your battery pretty quickly because your car's not running, obviously. So you need the car in run mode for it to um, connect to the program on your computer. Okay, so now once you have your car connected with your OBD scanner, you're going to go into OBD Link. And you're going to make sure that you have the correct car in here, Jeep Grand Cherokee. Um, and you want to connect to the body computer, then you're going to, depending on which year your car is, you're either going to do 11 to 13, 14 to 17, or 17 to 18. If you hit connect right away, um, it should connect. If it doesn't, you may have to go into advanced mode, or you may um, not have your car in the run position. Um, so go to the advanced mode, and then in advanced mode, uh, make sure the interface is for the correct um, OBD scanner you have, and you may need to switch which COM port it is. Um, so I'm using the USB OBD link, so I'm selecting that. And um, try both the different COM ports there as well. And again, make sure the body computer is selected above, and for the where it says modification, make sure that's the correct car as well. 
and then it should connect there for you. If it doesn't, you should you probably have something wrong, one of the settings, or you are not um, connected to your scanner. Um, once you get it connected, you're going to go to Active Diagnostics under the drop down here. You're going to go all the way down to the bottom, and you're going to select the the car configuration change at the bottom. So you're going to select that, um, and down at the bottom here, there are a lot of options that you can set. Do not just play around in here either, because there are a lot of things that can't be undone because they work for other vehicles and not just your Jeep. Um, so don't just willy-nilly um, change settings and you, there's no revert back to original settings. Um, what you're looking for under here is CBC config trailer backup lamps. And there are four settings. One is for the backup lamps, one is for the tail lights and the run lights, and then the other is for the turn signals and the flashers. Well, you're going to select one at a time, change the select value to yes, then you're going to start and it will let you know what position it's in currently. So I've already changed these on my car, so it says yes, so they're already activated. If it says no, there should be another setting next to stop that says next. So you'll want to click the next button, and then it will go through and switch it. Then you're going to want to do that for the other three that are underneath it. Um, so that one was for the trailer backup lamps. Then you're going to also want to do that for the tail lamp relay and the turn stop relay, and there's two of those, which are all, again, right there together. The last one you're going to need to do is under CBC features, um, one says trailer tow present, and you also have to activate that one as well. So you're going to go to CBC features, trailer tow present, and this is in a different spot than the other four. So select the value you want to change it to, yes, and then hit start. And again, you're going to have to hit the next. Mine is already activated, so I don't have that option. Um, and then that will activate them for you. And the last thing you have to do is you will disconnect, and then you're going to want to um, check to make sure your trailer lamps work.